Uh, electronics and children seem to be inseparable these days, mm -hmm. but the combination is certainly not always beneficial. For example, take those sleep machines that some parents use to help their babies fall asleep. Mm -hmm. There's a new study that says that they could be harmful. Yes, you should also think twice before you let your kids have smartphones and tablets. They could be bad for young brains. Here to discuss those issues, Dr. Lauren Crosby. All right, doctor, where do we start? Which one? So let's start with sleep. the sleep machines. All right, yeah. Let's start with the sleep machines. I just looked up some of the apps, you yeah. know, and when you see the advertising for the apps, it says, you know, developed by a group of scientists. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you read that, you think, well, it must be okay. Right. So and what's on wrong the with websites, them? too, with all the companies also. Yeah. They all you know, and it's something that everyone has on their wish list for their baby showers, you know, the sound machine so for the wrong? baby. Should you well, not the have problem one at is all? one that they are too loud. That's okay. the big problem because babies' hearing is developing. And we found that in two studies that they are way too loud. Normally, occupational hearing, eight hours at 85 decibels for adults is considered the highest that we're allowed to have as an adult. And, and parents put them on the crib Yeah, sometimes. and so these, they found 14 of the 15 they looked at can go to 85 decibels or higher, and parents put them loud to block noise from the outside mm -hmm. other rooms mm -hmm. in the house, but also to shush the baby. Like when mom and dad are fighting? Right, yeah. right, right, to shush the baby, because some babies respond to noise, so you know? is your so, thought to not have one at all? Yeah, well, you know, I think it's better if you don't need it. There are those fussy babies, as we know, and I had one who was super colicky, and mm -hmm. I had a fan going very low, but you basically you buy it it says hook it on the crib mm -hmm. you hook it on the crib and you put it on and you don't know what decibel it is not good so that's one don't put it on the crib number two don't put it next to the crib so they're supposed to be at least six feet away at least and as low as possible it, do, do babies uh, is their hearing different than ours is it either more sensitive is it Developing, developing, yes, right? yeah. So there's there's a risk of noise-induced hearing loss, and so there's more studies that are going to be done now to find out is it actually happening. But the hearing is just developing, and so you don't want to cause a problem with that. And they're more sensitive, they're hearing, right? Yeah, and also if you think of eight hours, they're hearing or the waves for eight hours. Is that going to be necessarily mm. good? Maybe they should hear people talking or other things going on in their environment. The dog. A normal <laughs> exactly. environment. The dog, the dog you barking. Know, like, so get your baby used to just going to sleep with like the dog barking and the car driving by and I think that that's probably good. You'll, you'll, have, a, you'll you have a child that you'll be thankful in the long run. Yeah, that's child what will be I able think. And you don't have to worry about their hearing. Okay, so now there was a, uh, there was a blog by someone, yeah. who, uh, a, a, a child um, occupational therapist, who, who said that, that electronics and kids, not a good mix. Right, and she wants to move to ban them for underage 12ers and basically felt very strongly and I understand from her position where she works why she feels that way. Talk There's a lot tablets of Tablets and iPhones and yeah, games. Yeah and, and screens in general. I mean TVs alone we know were never considered good. They're the babysitter mm -hmm. and now it's like your TV's carried with you everywhere you go so you can't escape it. I, but I don't think you can ban it but I think yeah. you need to be very mindful about how to use these things. I was surprised 12 because I thought that's mm -hmm. kind of an older age. I mean mm -hmm. I know my seven-year-old niece said to me once oh, let's FaceTime. I'm like Based on what's right. that? She right. taught me about you know, right, right. It's technology. It's science. Yeah, of the so times. you can't ban it because it is everywhere. But you have to use it judiciously. Under age well, two, so give no me your electronics. Guidelines. Okay, what do you? So under the age of two, no electronics. Right. They shouldn't be, you know, all the babies going through and playing games and apps. I don't, I don't buy that they're really learning a lot from that. I think interaction and reading books to them is just fine and probably much, much better for developing social and, skills. And then from say two to four, how much? One to two hours a day, and really limiting it still to Isn't that something the issue? that's. It is the issue. It's being disciplined. It's limiting it to something that might be maybe educational, but also talking to them, maybe playing the game with them, so that it's not something that's also antisocial. Right, because, because social you know everyone's so concerned suffering. about their kids' development and their social skills, and yet all their kids are are like this. They'll sit next to each other and be like this instead well, of talk to each well, other. Well, and think about it. What is the child seeing mom and dad do? The exact same yes. thing. You know, texting and whatever. Yeah, what and I mean. so they're at their kid's game. Are they watching their kids playing? You know, that was one of the things we're talking about. Or anywhere. Are they paying attention? No, they're always on their phone. And so then they detach from their kids, and then the kids attach to the phone, and everyone's on their, so, on their electronics. And obesity is a problem, right. too, because, you know, just like screens, you shouldn't have any technology like that in the bedroom, no TV in the bedroom. They shouldn't be in there with any of these things. It's taken the place sitting. of the television, mm -hmm. like, you know, which, when we were growing up, which our took parents. the place of the Get parents. off the right. TV, right. turn right. the TV on. And they're sitting around, so they're not moving. Also, movement is good for brain development. You learn better. What, and and I'm, I'm looking at our notes yeah. actually here. I'm cheating actually. Uh, radiation exposure from these devices? Well, is that a, the a WHO concern? has ranked it as potential, yes, that there could be from cell phones. And, you know, there have been reports about that. Is it going to cause you know, oh, brain tumors? Oh, right, 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 right. So just, you know, you 
You, we don't Sleep. have a lot of data, but not good. Sleep's a big problem with electronics. In general, even adults, any, any sleep specialist says one to two hours before bed, turn off the electronics. And that's if because of the type sleeping. of light emanating from the screen? And it, it overstimulates your brain. And it makes our brains your think brains it's almost like daylight. Too. You're just the images and the fast pace and everything. People can't just calm down and fall asleep. Well, good to so um, have some guidelines because electronics yeah, yeah. Are certainly a sign of the times. Yeah, no, it's not good. So okay. they, we need sleep, and that's not going to help. I know I do. All right. <laughs> Doctor, thank you yeah, very much. Dr. Welcome. Lauren Crosby from All Lapeer right. Pediatrics. Mm -hmm.